Continuing with National Heart Health Month, we wanted to educate our viewers on a very serious type of heart issue when your heart basically short circuits. We met up with Dr. Segerson in Harrison's electrophysiology lab. We're presently at the EP lab at Harrison Hospital in Bremerton and we, uh, um, we do a number of procedures here including um, catheter uh, ablation procedures to try to cure uh, arrhythmia problems. And uh, we also um, implant devices like pacemakers and, uh, and defibrillators that, uh, that help protect people from uh, slow heart rhythms or fast heart rhythms, respectively. Um, so this is where the magic happens, so to speak. Treating the heart's rhythm or electrophysiology has moved past magic in the last 20 years, going from an experimental therapy to a solid science of restoring a heartbeat. If the electrical wiring ever goes haywire, um, what happens is um, the cells are no longer well coordinated and you have uh, one part of the heart muscle that's trying to squeeze but the other part isn't squeezing. This misfiring of the muscles causes the heart to go from a steady pump to an offbeat wiggle. And when it's wiggling very rapidly, blood doesn't flow very well. An electrical glitch can be caused by a number of conditions, but those most at risk are people with a weakened heart muscle or a history of heart attacks. It can go wrong at many levels uh, and cause heart rhythms to be too slow or too fast. Um, and that's where I come in. Dr. Sagerson and other electrophysiologists are able to treat these short circuits of the heart by inserting a long wire up through the leg, finding the problem, and cauterizing the small bit of heart tissue, causing the whole muscle to be offbeat. We go into the heart um, with one of our catheters, and uh, we use a, an ultrasound image, like you see here, from inside of the heart, uh, to help us guide our catheters into the right place. And we have electrical recordings from a number of electrodes inside of the heart telling us what, uh, what is going on electrically. And we have a uh, computer modeling system that is, uh, that's telling us where our catheters are relative to various uh, anatomical structures inside of the heart so we know exactly where to go with our, um, with our ablation treatments. Electrical problems of the heart kill about 450,000 Americans a year and contribute to more than half of all cardiac deaths. The best way to, uh, to prevent being affected by uh, dangerous heart rhythms is to not let yourself develop cardiac disease. And, uh, um, you know, we're not perfect at that either in medical science. We know some risk factors to avoid and some lifestyle habits to, uh, to adopt um, to lessen your risk. And I'm sure you've talked about that a lot uh, uh, through this series. But the, uh, um, you know, and, uh, that's the best you can do um, uh, to, uh, to reduce the risk of, uh, of dangerous heart rhythms affecting you, I think. Thank you, Dr. Segerson and all of the nursing staff for taking us around the lab. I know I learned a lot about the complex workings of the heart. Now next week for Heart Month, why taking an ambulance ride during a heart attack could save your life even if it takes you longer than driving yourself to the hospital.